Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays, where it's time for your weekly space exploration and Crastorio 2 update on the in our, in our on, ongoing multiplayer uh, Factorio game. So let's have a look at what I've been doing. Well, in the in the last video, I talked about this red site, this red circuit area up here that I've been building, um, and this is now finished and it is running. The only problem is that it, I've overbuilt it a little bit, so it it builds the everything at a heck of a rate. And that rate is significantly faster than the trains are capable of bringing bringing the supplies in at. So we've we've got um, a lovely we've got a system here where the, the yeah the trains like that one come in they'll drop off a load of copper the copper will immediately drain straight out of all the warehouses like this go into this one and then it'll drain up here and so for a little while there is an absolute frenzy of making circuits. So we've got uh, basically this this area here is a copy of the green circuit factory down here. So we're making more green circuits up here. Second a second second factory for them because I reckon that it's not worth trying to make your red circuits off your original green circuit factory because it'll get absolutely swamped. Um, and the, the the throughput from here will not be well, it's not really sufficient to, to keep this area satisfied and this this area satisfied. So we're making them separately, so, but it's but through exactly the same design. So I've got, although I've done a bit of upgrading, I've upgraded these to red belts. So over here, where I've got two yellow belts running up the middle, instead of that, in order to make it a little bit more compact and to mean slightly fewer belts are coming out of the uh, the warehouse. I've now got red belts going up the middle here. So they carry twice as much. They're 30 per second instead of 15 per second. So you can get twice the throughput. And even so, it's not, still not getting quite to the top. Although if this went on for long enough, I think it probably would. But anyway, this is now producing a nice stream of green circuits that are then going up into here, where they're being split out onto these ones. There were six belts. So we, they're, 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 the, the belts are a little sparse. It's a little sparsely populated at the moment. But all of these things can build up useful buffers. So if I flick over to Navsat, mode, I, you can see that it'll fill up to this many thousand um, uh, green circuits being stored in here. And we've got quite a lot of copper being stored in here as well, because... This, this thing gets through the copper more slowly than this does, but they're both being fed by one, two, three and a half versus one, two, three um, red belts each. So there's about there's similar amounts coming through. Oop, look, so there we go. Those three red belts are draining. These three red belts still have quite a lot on them. So yeah, there's as I say, there's three red belts going to the green circuit production, three red belts going to the red circuit production. That's not balanced. I don't care because these just end up backing up to an extent so it's it, 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 it's it's fine we just end up with a load cash cashed in here but I don't care about that so yes the green circuits brought up here where they're then combined with all of the other circuits so I've got this this horrible system down here where we're bringing plastic off at this station and here comes another train with some more plastic silicon off here they're being cashed in these in these warehouses which hopefully are yeah as, as you can see set to the set to a sensible limit and then I've got all of these systems along here merging them so I've got one two three four five six places where we're merging from uh, plastic on one from a plastic belt and a silicon belt to one to, to, to having one on each side of each of these belts that means these can then run all the way around here as solid belts like this and then flow down next to all these machines where they can along with the glass that's being brought in from yet another station this is a bit crazy um, then all be turned into the um, electronics components and those combined with copper cables that's being made in these machines can be turned into the red, red circuits and this is a really nice system I like the, I like the basic design of this where we've got the, the 1 to 2 to 1 to 2 to 1 because the, the ratio is uh, for every 4 of these machines you need 2 of these and 1 of these and so it's spread out all the way across so we're making loads and loads of red circuits here or at least we potentially could be <clears throat> so yeah they, they they are then being passed out the top here at, at a, a reasonable rate down here they'll go into this warehouse and this is where things go a little bit less good because here we're splitting them off some of them are going over to here to be put into the into these warehouses which again fill up to this level eventually in many many years um, <laughs> and that will then allow us to, to the trains to come along here and pick them up and we may find that if we look at this um, no we still don't have a train load which makes sense yeah, if I look in here, yeah, because a, a train is four rows of, of stacks. So, yes, that is less than a train load at the moment. But it, it's filling up gradually. The problem is, and this goes directly against what I was saying earlier, I've tapped off some of these red circuits to come down here to be made into blue circuits. Because we had such a shortage of everything that's going into making the red circuits, that I thought, if I try and set up a second one of these, this will never get going. So, instead, let's set up this separately. So what we've got here is that some of the red circuits, I think that's probably half of them because these belts aren't full, are being then being brought down here where they're combined with um, rare metals, which are coming into another station in exactly the way you'd expect, and sulfuric acid. 
these are all being combined up here into into the blue circuit. So that is is working. We have a trickle of blue circuits coming out. Now, if we look into some of these, we don't have very many of them, but we do we are making them. So at the moment, they're being made. For some reason, there's, there's a signal right in the middle of nowhere here. Let's delete that. <laughs> there we go. Um, Yes, yeah, so they're being made here. They're not being made fast enough, but they are being made. And so this system is basically kind of sort of mostly working really honestly, Gov. And see, oh, another train's come in and dumped out another load of copper. So every so often a train will come along. It'll unload a massive quantity of copper and that'll be taken off up here and converted into green circuits and red circuits. So the system is working. We're just not bringing the copper in fast enough. However, I think we're probably going to end up filling up all of the things that require red circuits and therefore we're going to start to buffer them fairly soon. So I think all I've done here is I've created loads and loads of buffers but once they're filled up I think the system is probably going to be able to keep up and then when it has done when a train comes in here swoops in takes out a load of there's another copper train these are actually coming in quite quickly it's just we're taking it away so much more quickly that it can't keep up. Like I said I think I've overbuilt a bit up here. Um, yeah, so what eventually these will be, these buffers will fill up to the to whatever point they do. Then a train will come in, it'll grab from there, and then this this every all the buffers in the station will be full. So this station will then work. This system will work really really quickly to produce the next train loads worth of um, of red circuits, and th and, th and things will just start to work quickly and neatly. I hope. That's the theory anyway. So basically I have, yes, I've massively overbuilt. This should probably be, at the moment, this should be one column of each of these and with future expansion available for the rest of them. It's not, it's a massive quantity, but, you know, it'll, it, it, it basically, okay, it, it'll be fine eventually. It'll just, it'll just take a while to fill up all the buffers in which, during which time we'll put an enormous load on the, uh, on the copper um, systems. Maybe I'll talk to the other guys between between uh, streams, and we'll we'll talk, discuss whether we think we should cut off um, the cut off. Maybe if I, cut, I could cut this here and there and here, and then only this double column here, this this third of it would work, and then we'd have a third. We we don't we'd have the uh, the green circuits coming through more slowly, but I could also then cut off three quarters of this just sort of by cutting through there, I suppose, um, and then all of this would. Would grind to all of this would then run at about a third of the speed, or actually a quarter of the speed, because this this would only be down to a quarter, quarter of the speed it was running before. Yes, it'll take longer to fill these up, but we'll have a slightly less ridiculous load on the um on on the copper system. So maybe that'll be better. We'll have a discussion and see what. And so come along to the next stream and see what see what we decided. <laughs> oh dear. But yes, we are now actually making all of this stuff, so that's going quite well. The other possibility is we could then consider bringing this down to a single, a, 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 a one-two train rather than the one-two-one-two. One, two. That would work. It it would reduce the it would reduce the throughput of the of the uh, factory quite quite significantly. But that's something we could do in the temporarily until we until we do an upgrade to uh, to the next next level up. So the problem with all of this, uh, the reason that, that having all of this copper being eaten by this system is is a bit of an issue, is that I also made another village or town or whatever we call these things um, over here. Here we go. So this one is making low density structures. Or at least it would be making low density structures if we had an actual input of all the supplies. So we've actually got an extra station in here and this is for future proofing because if we go in and have a look at the low density structure uh, recipes. There are two recipes available, or two sensible recipes available. There's plastic, steel, and copper, which is the one that we're using here. So we've got, in theory, copper will sometimes be brought to here. Here, yes, this this station. Sometimes copper will turn up here, if we're lucky, and the circuit production ever catches up. And steel will be brought here if we ever have any steel, which we currently don't. Um, and so that will then come up. Oh, we do have a bit. Of, we have a bit of steel in here. So I'm not sure why these machines have stopped. Oh, there's some red inserters missing. Okay, so this this area is not finished. I need to go up here with some more red inserters and just finish this off. But the other thing is, we, we, we forced a steel train and a copper train to come up here so we could just sort of, you know, test that things are working and go in and look to see if, you know, I've remembered all of the inserters, which I clearly haven't. Um, so yes, we, at the moment we've got this this system where we've got steel coming in here, copper in here, plastic in here, and it makes low density structures. They flow out, they go into here. And as you can see from here, we've made a few. <clears throat> low density structures are fairly voluminous so it doesn't take an enormous number of them to fill up a train but the recipe as we see here takes a lot of inputs to make one low density structure it's ridiculously expensive it's a, 10 plastic bars 10 copper plates and two steel that's that's a lot of stuff especially as two steel requires something like um 10 iron or in order to make it or whatever five iron um 
one okay so two steel requires six iron so that's still quite that's quite a lot um so yeah so this is this is rather an expensive recipe but we do need them in fairly large quantities for everything rocket based so we're going to need this system to be up and running now there is another recipe here which takes in aeroframe scaffolds plastic glass steel plate so at some point in the future when once we have um ber beryllium i'm going to want to change this system here to take in uh, beryllium which will probably be mo made into the aeroframe scaffolds on site because that's just oh um okay in um, space exploration 0.5, making aeroframe scaffolds, I believe, just took aeroframe took aeroframe poles and beryllium, and aeroframe poles just took beryllium. So I was thinking, yeah, we'll just bring in a load of beryllium and make that into the air, into the aeroframe scaffolds on site. I didn't actually look at the recipes here. <coughs> seems we're um, seems we're also going to need cryonite rod and immersion plate. So I mean, immersion plate is rare metals and immersite power. Oh, good grief. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be a lot worse than I predicted. So I think that the point of this station was to bring the beryllium in in order to make the aeroframe scaffolds. Uh, that's not going to be the case now. Um, this is going to have to bring in the aeroframe uh, scaffolds themselves, completed, and just pass them up there and into this into the area. But when you do that, suddenly the recipe becomes massively cheaper. In, well, it's, it certainly becomes a lot cheaper, but it then require it does require different ingredients. So yeah, it's. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I don't know whether it's actually cheaper because of all this exotic stuff in here it requires, like the immersium. But we'll we'll have to have, we'll we'll see about that. We'll see how much immersium and how how much how, whether we make the aeroframe scaffolds because this is the only recipe for aeroframe scaffolds. So, yeah, the I put in some future proofing, but it turns out the future is is less proof than I thought it was. So. We're going to be sticking with this ex horribly expensive recipe for quite a while, I think, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but I guess we don't really have much of a choice. So yeah, that was um, that, that 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 has been a bit of a surprise. I had not looked at the recipes properly until now. So um, also, why is there some copper? Huh? Um, okay, so somewhere along here, there is a the somehow we've got some uh, low density structures onto the uh, on, on the wrong on the wrong belt here. Oh, here here this is this is the problem that needs to be moved out a little bit. So because yeah, the low density structures came down here. Went through these splitters, went into this splitter. Some of them went this way and ended up on this belt, which brought them back round up here into here. So that's going to be a thing to fix in the next episode. So every every stream we do, I end up with this sort of to-do list at the beginning of it, which is about a bajillion items long. Um, and that that's sort of all the things, all the problems that I've noticed when I've gone through making these videos. So these videos are actually quite useful because I spot stupid little problems like this um, much sooner than I would have done if I'd just gone okay well that's probably finished I'll assume it's going to work and we'll come back to it in a couple of days so at the moment there's um, yeah it's there's a stupid mistake I've made but I've spotted it a lot sooner than I otherwise would and it's gonna be really easy to fix I shouldn't um, yeah I just I don't know I, I forget that you can do this side loading into uh, into into undergrounds because I don't <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I know it's a thing, and it used to be the way to split off one half of a belt before splitters had filters on them. But I, I sort of forget it's a thing when I'm putting something together like this, and I just didn't notice. So that was a bit of a fail, but I'll I'll fix that next time. The next thing, uh, back over to map mode, down here. So we we have we have the yellow science over here being made, and it's now backed up actually because we've I believe we've done all of the science that we can do. All of the science require doesn't require space science, so we we've, we've done. So we've done everything that requires rocket tech guys. We're still going to need them later, but at the moment. We've got. We've done all the researches we can. Um, ooh, hmm. Okay. So robot cargo. Work, robot. Ro worker robot cargo size one doesn't require uh, space science. However, logistics three, which is a prereq for it, does. That's um interesting and a bit weird. Normally, Factorio is quite good about not having any prereqs. For not just yeah, not having things like that that can't be done. Anyway. So yes, we've done. We've done all of the science here. But in order to get that done. I needed a lot more of these satellite telemetries, the, um, the these these things here, and those are made by launching uh, satellite rockets. So we launch them from here. They fly off. They they look at the they look at space and they go here are here and they, they discover a thing. So we've discovered all of these all of these planets and we put names to quite a lot of these stars that we've seen as well. So we we are we are learning about the area around us um, gradually. Yeah, by launching satellites which go off and. And they'll do some sort of reconnaissance and, and have a look around. So making these requires quite a bit of stuff. If I if I look in here, you can see we, we need the low density structure, so that that's that's the whole point to this. I've made and we need other things like rocket control units, 
uh, rocket fuel and heat shielding. So um, there are a few things that need to be done up here. I think I fixed something about this station. I can't remember what it was. We had run out of rocket fuel, so that's now flooding in here. There are a few glitches and mistakes that have been made around here that have got things not working properly. But now we do actually have a, a nice steady flow of all of these ingredients coming in here, except for the low density structures. <clears throat> And there's a massive shortage of plastics. It's all being turned into red circuits at the moment. So this is this even this area has stopped. So we've just stopped launching rockets at the moment. However, that doesn't really matter because we've got a decent backlog of these uh, satellite telemetries now. So we've got we've got lots of these on here uh, be, that are going up to be made into the yellow science. So it's not too serious that we've effectively run out of them. We can we don't need to worry about it too much. Um, but eventually we'll want to make more of those so we can do more science. So we'll need to get the low density structures coming through for this. We're also going to need low density structures for various other things like um, like, uh, like cargo rockets and things like that. So we are going to need that steady supply of them. But at the moment, take it or leave it, I guess. So yeah, we launched a lot more rockets. And what we have up here is we have a system that watches in this chest. You see it's connected with the red, um, uh, red cable. It goes down here to this one. And this says, if there's less than a thousand satellite telemetries, then you can put satellites into here. And this will launch when, the, when it has cargo. So when the rocket fi is finished, this machine will put a satellite in and the rocket will launch. If no satellite is put in, the rocket won't launch. So if we end up with a thousand satellite telemetry in here, this will be deactivated and we won't put another rocket in. Oh, I thought I was making rocket noises. Uh, we won't put another satellite in, so it'll stop launching. And that means that we won't get to the point where we're wasting satellite telemetries because they, they're just being made, too many are being made in here. And I believe this machine will eventually just lose any excess satellite telemetries to turn up. Oh, we have a bit of plastic turning in. That's interesting. I wonder where that's coming from. Okay, there is a bit coming along the bus, bus down here, but not a huge amount. So that's enabling us to make little trickles of the low-density structure. So we're getting gradually closer to launching this rocket, which is nice still a couple off but yeah we're getting it's getting there very very slowly oh there we go here comes the rocket so you know what let's let's watch this rocket launch just because rocket launches are always fun and this this kind of, will kind of go towards demonstrating the uh, the effect that i was just talking about so here comes the rocket and then oop, the sat that, that inserter swung it put a satellite in there and now we're getting more stuff being loaded into the into here so we can make another satellite the rocket launches so, with lots of noise. And then once the rocket is launched, we get lots of satellite telemetry data being unloaded from here. And so this is now being passed across to here. Now, I can't remember how many... Uh, it's about 100 by the looks of it. So you get about 100 from there, and there's plenty of room in here for lots and lots of it. So if, once this gets up to 1,000, which it never will at the moment because we're emptying it as fast, almost as fast as we're putting it in, this will stop working. But there you go. So that's how that's how that works, and that makes sure that we don't end up wasting massive quantities of resources. Because um, we don't really need to explore any more planets now. As you can, uh, we've discovered we're discovering stars now, and we don't really care about them very much at, the, at this stage of the game. Um, so which, yeah, so all we really care about launching rockets, satellite rockets for now, is getting this satellite telemetry data in order to make science. Next thing I or another thing I did. So over here we have this place where we're dropping off core, core chunks at quite a, at a decent rate now. So as you can see, they're coming up here. They're being passed around here into here, where we are crushing, pulverizing them and turning them into useful stuff. This all then goes up into this warehouse here, where we uh, where we're sorting it. This is quite a lot, of, loads of useful stuff coming in. We've got the coal going out to a station. We've got the uranium going out, probably also to a station. <clears throat> all of the other ores and stone are coming out the top here and going over to the smelting area. Great. However, there is this chance. Hang on a minute. I built. Oh no. Oh, okay. Yes, I just couldn't see it through the through the pylon. Right. So there is a chance if if one of these starts to back up and copper. And our, um, amusingly, copper was starting to do that before I started the uh, the red circuit production facility running. If any of these start to back up and we're not using them fast enough, then they can fill up all of everything along here. They'll pack up back up all the way around here and into here. And at that point, we'll start to get too much of one of the of, of the uh, of whichever ore it is in here, and this will gradually start to fill up. And we don't want that to happen because if this fills up with say copper ore, then we run into the problem where all, where this will no longer be able to feed in, and all of all of the rest of the ores will back up, and it'll just cause problems. So, what I've got to deal with this is that down here I've got this system here, which looks at the amount of, um, which has massive negative, or significant negative numbers of all of the things that are being passed off to the north here, and then massive negative numbers of the things that are going out to be uh, to, to be taken away by train. 
And so if ever if ever we get to a point where there's too much of any of these in here, um, that mass that negative number when added to the number that's in here will go positive. And this inserter here is setting filters based on any positive numbers it receives. So if we ever get more than a thousand copper ore in here, that that will add to this. We'll get a positive number. This will go oh oh hey I need to exert some copper ore, and we'll start dumping it out onto onto this belt. That'll flow along here under here. And go into this system here where <clears throat> it's going to go round and round and round this loop. Now these haven't been made because we aren't making recycling facilities yet on the bus. But that's fine. That's the thing I can do. I'll build them at some point and then we'll, we'll, then we'll have them and it'll, it'll work. So the, the, yeah, the ores will flow round and round here. That each of these will deal with one type of ore and we'll turn it into landfill. The landfill can then be put onto this belt here. It'll go into this chest here and it'll be taken away for us to use for all our landfill purposes. And that's going to put a nice drain on any excess ores that end up in here. Um, and will allow us to just pipe off that little bit so at the moment we also have up here we have all of the um, excess rare metal ore being just coming straight down here and going into this machine to be turned into landfill and actually as we can see here there's a lot of it coming through and I'm not quite sure that's fast insert that uh, stack inserter I put in is going to be sufficient for this task um, may need to rethink that but we'll, uh, we'll we, we, we shall we shall see I might be able to filter things in, in, a, in a different way uh, but anyway, yes, this, so this is all the excess is then getting turned into, into landfill here. We've got 1,700 of it. That's not too bad. But when you consider the amount of it we've been shoving in here, it's not actually that much. So anyway, this will then generate all of the um, all of the landfill. We, hopefully, this will generate all of the landfill we need. But more importantly, it will prevent this from overflowing. <clears throat> this is also set up in a similar way, I believe. Yes, these ones down here are set to only work if there's more than a thousand in here. So this will fill up to about a thousand. And then if it's needed down here, this will get priority. But if there's any excess, then it'll flow down this way to be, as I say, to be made into, into the landfill. So that works. That'll work quite nicely. That should keep everything should keep everything ticking over nicely. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> oh dear. Um. Yeah, so that's pretty much all I've been up to in the last session. The uh, building up, building up these um, these big t town things take, actually takes quite a long time. Mostly because I spent a lot of time flying backwards and forwards between the uh, low density structure one and the bus, going, "Oh, I need more belts. Oh, I need more inserters. I still haven't got enough inserters. Oh, I need more this. I need more that." And just, I'm, I'm not, I'm, yeah. We want, we want to get the um, the ghost planner system up and we're running at some point. And that's a thing where you can you can set up all your robo ports to cover a to cover a, a blueprint or a ghost or anything like that and then tie that into a construction station and the station will then you can then they, you can then send a signal back where the station will essentially request all the things that are needed for that particular construction but that's quite a way off it's going to require blue blue chests which are behind space science it's going to require probably other stuff as well it, it's still still a way off still going to be a bit of a challenge so we haven't got that yet but you know we're working towards it I also worried a lot about the copper supply because I've put such a drain on it here. You can see that basically all of the copper that we're making at the moment is just being turned into circuits. And even after all this talking I've been doing. Um, okay, we're nearly at a train's worth here. <laughs> so that's so that's how fast it's going up here. We've got almost almost one train. And over here we've got... Oh, we've got a train that's arrived to pick it up. That's... Makes makes me think I've got some numbers wrong down here. Um, yeah, because you can... Oh yeah, this is a 16k... 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 4, 8, 12. Yeah, this is a 16,000, so that should, say, that should be a less than 16k. So this this train is just going to sit here for a very, very long time. But that doesn't actually matter. Um, it'll just sit there until it's full. So I'm, I'm sort of okay with that, even if it's not how this system's supposed to work. <clears throat> yeah, so that was me. So what has Tristan been doing? Let's move on to him next. So he's been, um, he, he, he did a bit of sorting out of the chests of shame. So what he did that by a, sort of through a rather lazy way uh, that caused an absolute bot frenzy. So he came in, he basically deconstructed these and rebuilt them right next, right next to where they were before. Um, which meant the bots came along and anything that was in one of these chests that shouldn't have been, or rather that has a filter chest somewhere else like this one that's saying, yes, put all of your yellow circuit, yellow belts in here. Uh, it would come along, it would grab them out of there, it would take them over here. But if there wasn't anywhere to put them, it would put them in the new yellow, yellow, um, uh, yellow warehouse. However, that did take the bots quite a while because there's literally a thousand, well, there's a thousand and a bit stuff in this one. There's 10, 11, 12, there's about 13, 14,000 stuff in this one. So, yeah, that was quite heavy on the bots, uh, which was inconvenient because I was also being really heavy on the bots because I was trying to build all of this because I'd, I'd finally, I put in the uh, the robot ports and say, yes, just come in and build this blueprint for me, please. So that was slightly unfortunate timing, but I mean, to be fair, it worked. It didn't require anyone to go over there and do anything manually, so 
I suppose that's the Factorio way. I can't criticise it too strongly. <laughs> He's also done an interesting thing. He's gone around and connected up all of the stations to these green and red cables that are going around absolutely everywhere. So I think it's either it's let's let's see if we can actually find a station that's doing a, doing a thing. Um, or that is actually connected to the network. Here we go. So drop offs. I think I was going to say drop off stations are connected to the uh, red network and uh, pick up stations are connected to the green, but that doesn't appear to be the case because here we've got all of. Oh no. Uh, um, I don't know. We'll have to ask him how this works and, and get and, and look at it in better. So I think I think it's all the pickup stations are connected to the green network. So we can look at this and we can go, okay, there are there's four hundred thousand uh, sulfuric acid, two hundred thousand iron plates, two hundred thousand copper ore, two hundred thousand um, uh, is that dirty water? No, that must be uh, must must be mineral water, and so on. So you can see roughly how much of everything is available. As you can see, there's 52,000 copper available, in there, uh, copper plates available for pickup. So no wonder the trains are running back and forth so much. Maybe we need to need more trains doing that. Um, but let's see. So yeah, there's quite a lot of stuff available in all the stations, and now it's all on this network network here. And the theory behind this is that we can have high and low priority stations. So, for example, um, from the core mining here, core fragment processing, we want to get rid of this coal as quickly as we can and use this in preference over any coal that comes out of a coal mine. So down here, it goes into a station. And we want to prioritise the station. Now, in LTN, that'd be trivial. You'd, you'd use the uh, priority signals on the stations, and LTN would sort that out for you. But because we're massive masochists, we decided it'd be fun to try playing without LTN for a change, just to see what that's like. And so, um, what this means is that we, with this system of cables, we can now, in theory, prioritise the stations up by... So, this this is a high priority station. So, this one just says, we'll just say, if there's less than 8,000... Oh, sorry, if there's more than 8,000 coal in the, in the station, turn the station on. And the station's currently not turned on because there's only... Uh, on the red network, 6,900 uh, 6 coal, coal in the station. So, that's fine. But if we now go off and find a coal mine station like this one... In theory, and I don't know if this has actually been set up yet. No, it hasn't been. Um, in theory, we would cable this up to, to say that um, if there's more than a certain amount of coal available on the um, on the network here, then we either then we t t then we turn this station off. Um, so I don't I don't know exactly as I say I don't know how he's planning to cable to to connect all of this up. But eventually we'll have a system where this station will turn off if there's a lot of coal available on the, on the system from the high priority stations. Um, we'll we'll see how that works. But that can then tell this station so that will then basically tell the trains to go over to the the other coal station in the core mining area in order to pick up from there instead of coming here to pick up from here. At the moment it's a work in progress. But eventually, that should allow us to do prioritization even without LTN. And that's going to be quite useful because at the moment, we've just got vanilla Factorio prioritization, which is where it uses the nearest station that's available. So, uh, which is why, as I was saying earlier, all of the copper is going to here instead of being taken over here because this is, at least on, on the train network, is closer to here than this is. Which is a bit weird because that actually looks like it's closer. But, the, but the, with the way the because, the, because the trains have to come out here, it's actually that distance that matters, not that, dis, not that distance. So yeah, it's a little bit funny, but it does, but it, it, it's, it's, how, it's how Factorio prioritizes essentially. Oh dear, we've got a train, um, a train jam. That's and, oh no, maybe we have. No, no, we have. No. We. Oh, because this train's trying to come down here. That's why it's jammed. Right, we might need to remove this turnaround point here or put in more more track here elsewhere. Anyway, that's a Tristan problem, which is appropriate given that I'm talking about what he's been up to. But yeah, this area in here seems to be... You always get this sort of... Or at least I always seem to get this sort of thing with my Factorio factories. There's always somewhere in the middle where all of the trains always want to go and it's always awful. So yeah, this this, this is going to cause issues. But the reason I was coming here is that there's now is to tell you that there are now two of these tra two of these core fragments trains because we've got enough core we've got enough core drills now um, that we needed a second one and that's why this bit along here is now quite a lot longer so that the trains can come in here and one can queue here while the other one is unloading so they don't sit out on the main line and cause even worse train jams. Um, so this means there should be presumably there are t t currently two trains somewhere out there bimbling around the um, the world. Yeah, here we go, Look, picking up. Uh, this one's coming to core drop. That one's still going out to the mines. So we've got two trains now bringing the, bringing the core fragments in because we're getting through them at such a rate and we're producing them at such a rate. So it's worth having the second train in order to do that. 
He's created some rail blueprints, which is always nice. So we can look in here. We've got game blueprints. We've got some rail blueprints. We've got basic ones. This is this. This is just uh, OOC loops and straights. And these are all. And the thing is, these are all linked to the um, uh, linked to the grid. Linked to the uh, the grid. So we can you can drop these down much much more easily, and they'll always be in exactly the right place. <clears throat> uh, also junctions. Apparently, we've got a one-sided offshoot. We've got Okay, different ones. So full, full proper crossroads and a single chunk full crossroads. I don't know why. Um, oh, I see. That's sort of compacted into a into a single chunk. Should should you need that? That's nice. And also and also the station ones. We've got the various different types of pickups and 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 stacks and and so on. So we can. So in theory, we're now capable of building stations because Tristan spent a certain amount of his time coming along and building these stackers for us. So we'll we'll all say, hey, could I have could I have a a, a station set or a station system set up, please, with it's got um, two drop offs and one pickup. And Tristan will go, fine. He'll come along and build this up here. I think he'll build out basically as far as the warehouses, and then anything beyond that is up to us. But so now he's basically he, he's um, offloaded that onto us by making blueprints. He's probably going to tell us to go off and do it ourselves in the future, should we say? <laughs> There's another station or two on the bus. We've got low density structures being dropped off here, if we ever have any. This is just generally gradually expanding as required, but I think this is the only extra one that was added this time. We even have blue circuits and yeah, red circuits being dropped off here now. So we've got a nice nice supply of everything being brought in and dropped off on the bus. Yes, there's rather a lot being um, buffered here. That's why we're having so much so much of an issue with the copper at the moment, but. You know, once the issue is sorted out, it'll stop being an issue. <laughs> um, you know what I mean. Okay, so Tristan has also been responsible for putting in lots more of these core miners. We've got uh, one, we've got them. Basically now, every every core um, production, uh, every core seam in our, in our, um, in, inside our walls should now have a core mine on it. And we've got air purification with them all as well. So as you see, we've got this, we've got the belt coming out of here. This one's a bit of a horrible one because it was miles from any sort of train systems. But it comes over here, joins onto the one from this island here. And then we can load up a single station here. So the this one is actually, this one will be filling up twice as quickly as any of the others. So the trains are going to need to come out more here more often. And we've got the standard um, uh, system set up here for dropping off and picking up uh, filters as well. So this is a little bit of a dodgy setup because we've got the two stations in almost exactly the same place, overlapping horribly, and a single track bringing them down here. So this is not a nice way of setting up trains, but it'll probably work. In theory, we could get a bit of a train jam caused by this because you're not allowed to bring a train into here until the previous train has come out. So if a train comes in to pick up the core fragments, um, and is sitting down here. Load as soon as it's come in here, it's possible that then the uh, this the the uh, reload this this train the uh, the the uh, what what do you call it the um, outpost resupply train could end up waiting here for quite a long. Or, oh no, there's there's actually there's a there's a buffer place for it to, for it to wait. So it'll it might it might not be too bad. We will uh, we'll have to see whether this causes any problems in the future. <laughs> um, yes. <clears throat> He's also put in some more uh, air purifiers. He said northeast of Blue Circuit. So, oh, up here, right? Okay. So, in order to catch the pollution that's coming off from here and stop it, stop some of it getting over to to these guys who've been labelled with kill this. Um, yeah. Okay. We probably should. This should probably be continued all the way around the the edge of this this island to, uh, or this, this promontory, whatever you want to call it, to make sure the. Uh, the, 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 the pollution doesn't escape too much um, and, and upset these biters. That said, we do have defences set up, so we are okay with biters coming in, but the more you pollute at them, the more they'll evolve, and the sooner it'll be till we get to the gargantuan ones coming through and uh, trying to bite our faces. And we'd like to avoid that. Okay, I think that covers everything Tristan's been doing. Um, I won't start talking about what what I've got planned for the next episode just yet, um, because there's quite a lot of it, um, and uh, we well, I think that'll fit in better at the end of the next episode after I've talked about what uh, Mike and Mark have been doing. So, thank you for watching. I hope you'll come back uh, tomorrow for the for the second part of this this video, where I shall be talking about the other two and all of the, all of the, and all of the nonsense they've been up to and all of the chaos they've been creating and um, and all of the all, all of all of these. I'm sure they've been doing some very useful stuff as well. But we'll it'll be good to go and have a look at that. So, thank you for watching. Uh, Come along tomorrow for the other half of this video, as I say, uh, and on Sunday for the Dyson Sphere program recap video. The streams are on Monday, so we've got well, the streams are Monday for Factorio Space Exploration, so we're, and Crastorio too. So we'll be continuing with this and carrying on with everything on our to-do list, which is um, there's the, it is kind of a lot, should we say? And then on Wednesday I should be playing Dyson Sphere program, so that's the uh, that's the Wednesday night stream. Um, that's that's basically that's that's it. That's the and that's your content for the week. Um, if you need some if you if you need some ho uh, hosting services, check out trefoilbe slash Plays. That's our sponsor for this stream. Um, they are very kindly hosting our server for us. And if you want them to do the same for you, then you can just go along there and and sign up. There'll be some information on the screen about it now, of course. So thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the sort of the the view of how things have changed on our sort of summary uh, train driving along and and trying to kill everybody uh, little video snippet. And I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. <laughs>